it's an art when you have the ability uh, to pull records out and, and, and each one that you pull out means more than just what it is as far as just another record made. Uh, my name is Frank Contreras and uh, I've been collecting vinyl since the early 80s and it'd be ignorant for me to say I have every record because nobody has every record except God, <laughs> God Almighty, the God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But uh, through my experiences of, uh, of listening to a lot of uh, uh, DJs, uh, reading a lot of uh, uh, message forums on the internet, uh, I've learned a lot and I have came a long way. I want to thank some of my friends who brought records over and just left them here, you know, because I, I also uh, produce uh, mass amounts of music for uh, various artists. And uh, I've been doing so for uh, about 15 years, maybe 17, something like that, 20 years. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, the, the largest amount of my records would be here, uh, going that way and this way. <laughs> I've got maybe 20,000 records, somewhere around there, and I look forward to collecting more, and um, I love to share a lot with you, but uh, like most DJs and producers, uh, we don't, we don't want to give away too many of our secrets of what we collect, how we collect, what labels we collect, what producers, uh, you know, uh, several artists uh, looking for you know solo artists band artists uh, how to dig how to smell them how to look what what covers grab your attention I uh, got a lot of old school rap uh, the real rap that uh, let me see if you can see it here from the, from the light here yeah a, a lot of hip-hop that uh, is very hard to come by now hold on a second one of the things that I've noticed about uh, uh, certain individuals that may collect records is that uh, they tend to throw away a lot of uh, a lot of vinyl or, or give away or get rid of that they feel don't have no particular use for or that is not considered the thing to collect which is to say what everybody is trying to collect or what everybody's into doing now uh, and I'm not in, I, I, I myself find myself falling into that but see I, I, I'll what I'll do is I'll put a lot of that to the side and uh, and uh, and won't go through it all for instance I'll be searching for a particular type of beat for an artist that I may be working with or for for a, a CD or a tape or just for me to you know when I take a trip to the mountains or something I want to listen to and what I'll do is uh, uh, I'll go back and listen to stuff that I may have listened to years ago several years ten years maybe six months ago that uh that uh didn't speak to me the same way as it did today in other words I'm, i may be looking through some string instruments or something you know a collection of string instruments or horns you know maybe some some horn instruments or something that uh that didn't speak to me before but now i find that this is exactly what i need for this particular project or, or or whatever it may be, you know, as far as uh, as far as what I what, what I'm trying to create or what I'm trying to use for, because a lot of the vinyl now is very hard to get. I mean, you could go to swap meets, Goodwills, you could travel around city to city, in the United States or even overseas, and uh, look through phone books and collect and collect the record shops and go in there and and, uh, and buy them out <laughs> if you got several thousands of dollars, because you know. Nowadays, vinyl is, is, is very expensive. You know, some some albums by a group like The Meters may, may cost you up to $100, which, you know, you may you may go to your uncle's house or your grandma's house or your maybe your dad bought records and you'll find it sitting in the garage, you know, and uh, you never knew it was there. So, 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 so I encourage you, man, I challenge you to... Uh, to not to throw anything away because if you throw something away I may end up with it you know and, and I've actually found uh, records sitting in front of houses that they're throwing away crates at a time and I I wouldn't go through and, and take what I like I take the whole thing and, and go home and uh, and hopefully one day have the time you know to to go through every song and uh, appreciate them all you know because a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of these artists that made records for one day 
it or thought that they were going to be big, you know, big, uh, big superstars or celebrities, which they probably were in fact, but a lot of them are throwaway records now, but uh, we can't necessarily look at them as throwaway records, we got to look at them as for what they are, they, they are data to the modern DJ, to the modern producer, all records are is da data. I, I once said to somebody, man, I could take any record I pull out, like this record here, which is a uh, James Brown record, and I could make you a, a dope track. I'll make a dope trap out of this. And um, and I, I was challenged to do that for many years. You bring me any record, I don't care which one record it is, I'll chop it up and I'll find something on there that'll make you groove. So I encourage you to do the same, you know. Uh, I even used to sample uh, Disney records. A lot of people used to make fun of, uh, of me when I first started because they said, man, you got you got Mickey Mouse turntables. Well, you know, that's the way I started. That's how I started. I didn't start off with Technic 1200s like, like, you know, some people did. I started from the bottom. I still got the same 1200s that I had back then. And, you know, praise God for that. But I've moved on now. I've got, I've got the, the CDX turntables. They, uh, they got Final Scratch Pro now and a lot of other things you can use now. And um, also, I encourage you to back up all your vinyl on a CD. You know, ain't nothing like the natural touch of, of, of a record. You know, the natural touch of a record like Crush Groove. You know, 1986, I believe it was. Yeah, I remember when this came out. Or 85. I went to actually go see this movie. Uh, still don't got the DVD, but I do got the vinyl. I do got the vinyl. And, and of course you could go buy this on, on, on CD, you know, or download it off of LimeWire or, or something illegal like that or iTunes. But why not back it up? You know, back it up. Back it up to your hard drive, you know. They got a lot of programs now. You could, uh, you could back your stuff up and uh, hook up your laptop to your turntables if you got a MIDI, MIDI turntables or USB ones and uh, scratch it up. You know, these, these, uh, this vinyl has a very warm feeling. It's nothing like original vinyl opposed to your flatline CD sound. So uh, once again, uh, I'm DJ Trix, uh, SavingSoul.com, you can check us out. And uh, I'll be doing more interviews like this, sharing some vinyl with you. And I encourage you again, go out there and do not quit on vinyl. Vinyl, they say some people were saying in the late 90s, it was coming back. The early early uh, 2000s, a lot of DJs were, were bringing it back. Uh, 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 cut uh, Chemist, uh, DJ Qbert, a lot of these DJs, uh, you know, the DMC uh, DJ finals and stuff like that were uh, actually getting people motivated to go out there and start, you know, a new era, a new generation, a, a new type of scratch came out, plenty of scratches, uh, you got juggling now and, and crab scratching and opposed to back in the 80s, it was just, you know, your, 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 your basic scratching like already, the transformer scratch, which is, by all means, as, high, as far as you can get. Uh, and uh, you know, I just challenge you. Just, just keep mixing. You know, show your your, your kids how to mix, and let them take it to the next level. We're gonna see where this thing is gonna go in the next 20 years. So I'd like to dedicate this prayer. Jams I thought at the time, and uh, just wanted to share it with you uh, a little bit. Uh, it's a record you could probably buy online if you want to check it out. It's on LA Posse Records. It's called Genius is Back. Mix Master Spade and the Compton Posse. I actually uh, was just wondering the other day whatever happened to Mix Master Spade. So if you're out there, Mix Master Spade, hit me up at SavingSoul.com. I actually uh, had your demo tape that was rolling around. They had songs called uh, The Clucks Come Out at Night. Which was taken from the Freaks Come Out at Night and went the clucks come out at night. Our Roxanne Roxanne uh, flipped over to uh, Rock Man Rock Man, and uh, they was they was they was hard man. They was to me the first gangster rappers. Toddy T makes Bastard Spade. Uh, they were doing it back in whoo the early early eighties man. Uh, and uh, you know of course Eazy and N.W.A. hit the streets with the first uh, gangster records you know. But uh, 
But these guys were actually the first ones to do it out of Los Angeles. So how many? So right now I'm sitting here with uh, a couple youngsters. Uh, one of them knows how to how to DJ and scratch. The other one's my nephew, and uh, they're just gonna ask me some simple questions. I figured I, I'd incorporate this somehow in the. Remember this song right here? You call wanna be with me? You TFO? Got two of them to see what. A Joe Baton. Hey, hey, thanks, Raquel, for giving me this record. Uh, never heard it, but yeah, I got Raquel. it. It's a Joe Baton. Everybody give him Raquel a hand clap. She lives in Arizona now, yeah? Let's go rack. Rock it in the pocket. Ugh! You guys know about that? Rock it in the pocket? You need a jack now. It's only the finest. So, you guys have, want, have any questions you'd like to ask me about uh, record digging crates? Well, where is your first record? Where's my first record? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. That's somewhere mixed up in it's here. It's up there. It's actually my first record. Uh, well, I seen it still a jumpsuit. <laughs> it's still pending. My first record is still pending. Mm -hmm. Actually, my first record was. Uh, I don't want to say what it was because if I say what my first record was, then everyone's gonna clown me. Because then <laughs> it'd be like if I said something like my first record was rap two. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people know rap. This wasn't my first yeah. record, but if um, I said rap too, it was my first record. Um, Everybody would be like, whoa. Kids. Mickey Mouse's greatest hits. Lord, I love my <laughs> philosophy. I, I, I specialize in collecting old school hip-hop. What's your most expensive one you ever bought? My most expensive record I ever bought. Oh, man. Uh, mm, well, I, I, I haven't really paid more than $50, $50 for a record. Damn. Only because only because I, 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 I'll wait or... We, we used to have this old trick. We used to do this record right here. Oh, okay. This record right here actually was sent to me from New York. It's Cutmaster DC. You really don't want to battle. Um, this record, actually, you couldn't even buy it in L.A. when I got it. So, I don't know why I just flipped it off. I'm looking through records and pulling stuff out. But what we used to do in the old school days was we would get two records. A lot of DJs know this. And we'd swipe the covers. And we put a no one in there, then go to the counter and pay $1.99 for a $50 record. But what happens is they started putting the prices on the inside of the record, or, or, or the record shop started checking the record, and then they got hip to what we were doing, so that didn't last too long, you know. Cheater. Yeah, well, I repented. I repented, you know. I'm forgiven. You can't see me. Papillon, anybody ever see this movie? Happy on, good movie, man. Uh, movie? Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. I was just thinking about this movie the other day, actually. Star Wars. So, uh, old double G's, do or die. Ugh. Ugh. Yo. What's up, man? Any questions, guys? Well, when did you first start recording? Start recording? Or, uh, like, doing what you do now? Oh, I started doing that in, uh, 1986, 7. Around there, 1986. How old were you? We were 14. Who was it? Uh, me and one of my friends. Yeah. We sent a demo to McCullough Records. Anybody yeah. out there know what McCullough Records is? We sent a demo to McCullough. Got a letter in the mail, but, you know, yeah, we started a long time ago. Started a long time ago recording, recording songs. Yeah, so, you know, it ain't like now you just... Download from an iPod, you know. Guess that's it. One way. Guess that's <laughs> it, yeah. Guess that's it, yeah. You got any questions, Frank? How many records do you have? How many records do I have? Ooh. Good question. Huh, let's see. I'd say about 20,000. About 20,000 records. Yeah, something like that. I, I, uh, I had more, but... I don't have them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I should have more, but you know what happens is I go through these seasons where I stop buying okay. records. And then, uh, you know, I, 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 like, I don't buy records no more, man. I download everything. I don't buy records no more. I record it for my friends. I don't buy records no more, man. I download all my beats. You know, I started doing that for a while. So you go back and forth through seasons, at least me. I'm still true to the game. Don't get me wrong. I still, I still buy records all the time, but... I'm a little more like cautious now what I buy as far as like going in there and buying that many records and spending two hundred dollars. I really don't do too much anymore. Yeah, so yeah. 
So what's up guys? What's up? You guys are lousy, man. We love you. I'll cut this part out, but you guys ain't making it funny, dude. <laughs> like, well, this is a cat. I'm not funny. What's up? Okay, ready? We're going to cut it back in right here. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, actually, yeah, check this, drum, little this little drum machine. That's one of the first... I don't know what this is doing there, but this is actually <laughs> one of the first little... Drum machines Just that we. Like that, 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 no, actually, look. <laughs> see, look. This is one of the first little drum machines we made. One of our first uh, tapes off of it. We used to go. And all we do. Do the cat's foot. Yeah, you can program it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Look, look, Do doom doom. Okay. Okay. So. What's your favorite record? Yeah. What's my favorite record I have? That is a dumb question. Oh, dumb. That was dumb. <laughs> so, do you have any, like, any regrets Are you of like, buying any record you have? Like, no, I don't regret it. Do you have one with like, a naked boy on it? Naked, out. naked boy. Like yeah. naked people on it? Oh, uh, yeah, there's some. <laughs> well, sometimes yes. There's well, some. Sometimes yes. Especially like DJ breaks. I got DJ breaks over here. Yeah. Oh, look at this record. Have you ever seen God? <laughs> Mandela. This record right here is good. Out the barge. It has a song right here called... Uh, Queer. Oh, this ain't it. oh, yeah. Time Will Reveal. That Isn't song that is Prince? tight. If you don't have that record, you better go out and get it. Do you have any evil ones? Like with like the devil on it? Records with the devil on it. I think, like, you I got think, like, like, like weird ones? Like, like Return to Backwards. It goes... Really oh, yeah. Really we used to do... Any, everybody out there, if anybody knows about... Backmasking. Oh, he asked me if I have any records that have the, that have the devil in it. <laughs> Cut, quote unquote. Uh, mostly every records that don't uh, worship God or uplift the name of Jesus Christ is, could be considered a devil Shh, record. But we're going to, uh, quote unquote, but then we're going to, he asked me the question about any records you can spin backwards and, uh, and it says stuff in it. Well, the most popular one everybody knows would be uh, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, 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 oh, Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin, Song of the Century. You spin it backwards and it says, oh, I don't want to say what it says, but I'm oh, sure everybody so knows. Cute. Then you got uh, yeah. Start to Smoke Marijuana by... Uh, That's another One Bites the Dust. Another One Bites the Dust. Then you Dude. got uh, Dude. Cheap Dude. Trick. Dude. You got Yellow. Isn't there Britney Spears one? Yeah, now there's Eminem, Britney Spears. Yeah, you got yeah. uh, Prince. You got... Uh, uh, the Jackson. Beatles, a lot of the Beatles songs you can spin backwards about maybe about 15 of theirs. So, Bob Marley? I don't know about uh, Bob Marley, but I, I was into that for a while, spinning records backwards to see what they said. I was actually, you know what's funny about it is, let me uh, let me go back to the one about no, so about uh, 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 the one song, Stairway to Heaven. The part you, you, you spin backwards says, uh, There's still time to change the rope, John. For those that know that part. So well, what I did one time was I said, and spun backwards, it says, here's to my sweet Satan. Uh, then it goes on to say, the one made a path here's whose power is sad, reach Satan. power in Satan. But that little part oh, where it goes, there's man. still time to change the road, John. Uh, you spin that backwards and it says, here's to my sweet Satan. Sounds kind of cool. So what I did was I experimented, I did a little research on myself, and I said, there's still time to change the path you're on. And I reversed it in a, on an Akai sampler, you know. I, I reversed what I said. There's still, I said it normal. There's still time to change the road you're on. And nothing happened. It was just like, rush, 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 nothing. So then I go, wait a minute. How can I say the same words they said, spinning backwards, but they don't say nothing. But then I said, wait a minute. Let me say it the way he said it. Which was said kind of a funny way. There's still time changed about John. And when I did that, it can't, it said it. Here's my sweet Satan. I was like, oh, no one wow. So it has something to do with, with the way they said it. Now I'm going to break the ice right now. Some people say, uh, was it accidental? Did the record say that stuff accidental? Or did they make it like that? If it was accidental, it would say something like, pigs lay eggs. Okay? If it was intentional then they would have to hide messages in it. And some people think it was spiritual. I don't think it was spiritual. I believe that it was it was, uh, it was, was planned that way. It was not accidental, but it was prepared that way. And the reason why I say that is because if you listen to him forward, you could hear a little bit in there. You could hear it. You could tell. So you mean that you think he did it on they purpose? They purposely added those things in there 
And then later on came out in, in reviews and commentaries saying that somebody found that stuff in there backwards when in fact they planned all that. I so know like, they did. I are you saying did. that like he said it that way and then tried to figure yeah. out a way that he yeah. could say it to where it's... Uh, yeah, they did. They, I, I don't think so. They actually... That's hard to do. But yeah, that question again, uh, I do believe they hid the, the, the messages in them. And why... Whew, they just were caught up in a lifestyle. They were caught up in a lifestyle that... How would they figure out how to do that though? Well, they were working with a lot of people like Alex de Crawley, they say, was one of their biggest, uh, uh, it, he was a guru in rock at the time. What do I mean? Uh, he was just like, a guru, like he was everywhere in it, he was a rich man, he actually renamed himself the B666. You could see him on the Sgt. Pepper's album, he's uh, like the second guy to the right on the left side, he's a bald man, actually the doors, uh, uh, Jimmy Page bought a house that he owned, uh. Different things like that. He owned cult bookstores, and uh, I don't know. I, I believe he's dead now, so he's in hell now. <laughs> and um, I believe, okay, what it what, what it was was this man had a book out called the Adempt the Adempt Exempt or something like that, which was basically oh, yeah. how to talk back, training yourself to watch videos backwards, how to listen to photographs back, photographic records, how to watch movies backwards, read things backwards, think backwards, talk backwards. So they may have. Actually had a little of a church with that guy, you could say, and he kind of was telling them how to do things, you know. Then you got John Bottom, who actually died. They, a lot of people might might say that he had something to do with uh, uh, adding uh, those messages in their songs backwards, which is is also not the only Led Zeppelin record that had that in there. They also have cult occult occult symbols on their on their records, those little symbols six, with six, the six, with the triangles and the feathers and stuff like that. The beast. I actually just recently went to a Pink Floyd concert and I was like, what am I doing here? You know, I could just see, it was like I was in hell, the way that people were just, just you know, I was, it, was, it was so horrifying, I came home and cried actually. So, you know, I mean, me also being, let me show you something over here, because uh, it wouldn't make sense if, for me to collect vinyl if I didn't actually have my own vinyl that I made, so what is it? this is this, uh, a, a record I actually yeah. produced. Yeah, my name's right there. It's called 18 with a bullet. So I actually have my own record too. So play it. Play it. <laughs> it's the sign of this. He wants to play it. Uh, it sold about eighty thousand copies. It was selling in. Uh, now it's in Japan and all that, but it was selling in Japan. Arizona, New Mexico, and we we're actually pretty big in Arizona at the time. We were. Uh, we was we actually sold more than Pearl Jam at one in one month up there in in, in Phoenix. So. So Spanish Fly, I actually made a record myself. So I just don't collect vinyl. I have one of my own. So, so yeah, we kind of covered a lot, and uh, you know, and you know, talked a lot. If you have any questions about vinyl, you could email me at uh, Frank at SavingSoul.com, and uh, yeah, I'd love to share with you some songs, but uh, I'll have to do that on another time. Because uh, I'm still in the process of, of organizing stuff right now. So once again, DJ Trick, see ya! Ooh, see ya! <laughs> Drum break beats, what are they? Drum break beats are that part of the record that is considered the breakdown or the break. Uh, and uh, you could you could uh, you could uh, witness that in uh, like songs like uh, MC uh, Young MC Bust a Move. Uh, they had a breakdown in there which they sampled by Ball and Jack. And uh, oh, a lo lots of lots of uh, artists. I mean, even myself uh, were uh, were sampling a lot of drum beats. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a collection. This is actually a very rare vinyl that uh, has uh, drum beats on it. So uh, I'm gonna play some for you. So you can get an idea of what part of the song you you are looking for. Here's uh, don't I don't really necessarily know the titles of uh, where these drum beats are coming from, but a lot of times none of them, none of us do. So check this one out here. That's hot right there. Yeah. 
try another one. Let's see what else is on this record here. This, this bag of treats. A bag of treats is what they are, really. Yeah, I don't know what you'd want to use that for, but... Yeah, that's... Hot. I like that right there. Let's see what else is on here. That's hot. As a matter of fact, I'm going to grab a record right here, and I'm going to mix that drum beat with a, with, with a rare groove. Give me one second, I'll be right back. A lot of times when you're using, uh, when you're using a lot of old songs, they necessarily won't go right on. You got to play with it a little bit, and uh, I'm on my knees right here on the floor, actually, so it's kind of hard for me to, you know, to, to show you exactly how it would how it'd be on beat. Let me try this. Let me try like this. You gotta play with the pitch a little bit, so just there we go. A lot of times too, what you want to do is you want to try variations of beats. So let's try another. Beat. This one sounds tight right here. Let me find the, the, the pitch. Usually I find the pitch while I go. There we go. was tight that was hot right there I'd actually consider doing something like that you know uh, again uh, I encourage you to uh, go through your dad's old records your neighbor's old records but you can't go through my old records and uh, hunt search you know until your fingers you know get ripped up a lot of times I'm I dig the record so much right here where my fingers meet the skin gets ripped back I know some of you DJs are or, or, you know, beat diggers, they know exactly what I'm talking about, the skin getting ripped back when you're digging in the records constantly. I'd go home, you know, with my fingers just split back, hurting, you know, all infected from the old dust and, and whatnot. Uh, but once again, this is DJ Tricks showing you some examples. I mean, I could cut it up all fresh and put my stuff, you know, to CD, you know, over this video on real clear, but I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show you the clarity of a rare groove. Is, is that a rare groove? It's going to stay a rare groove. No matter how you mix it up. Once again, it's DJ Trick, SavingSoul.com. Until next time, may Jesus Christ show you some love and affection. Peace.